What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Wacto eSig. Today we have some temperature control and it's in a clone. So let's look at it. So this is the box that the DNA40 clone comes in. Uh, right off the bat, I wasn't impressed at all. Not just because it's a plain box, but because well, it says DNA40 and it's not a real DNA40. So I don't know. So inside you get this uh, USB charging cable and I'm pretty impressed by the quality of this. I haven't had any problems so far with it and it doesn't seem too easy to break. Next up you get the device in this bubble wrap and it's pretty impressed that there's no logos on it or anything which is good to see. I do have this evaporated sticker on there that I stuck on myself. Yours will not come with that. And finally you get the user manual for the DNA40 and the DNA50 which apparently both have temperature control so that's cool. And that's it for the box. Okay so I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because I'm sure most people have seen the HANA mod or the DNA40 before um, or some kind of temperature control. I just want to show you if it works and if it's a good device. So on the back here I have this evaporated sticker which you will most likely not have but on the back you have your battery and you can see all your insides there. It's on a nice see-through thing so you can see if anything is wrong what is wrong without removing that that sticker that will void your warranty. Uh, so the battery is kind of hard to get in and out, but it's, it's not dangerously so. You can pop it in without ripping apart the battery. It's not that much of a problem. The back is screwed in with screws. There are no magnets, but I've seen on the Vapor Chronicles that he actually put on some magnets and got that sorted out. So I'm not saying that you should do that. I'm just saying you can do that. I, I'm honestly too lazy to do it especially for this device that I don't use all the time, but it is an option. So even though it's kind of hard to take out the battery, it does have the USB charging port at the bottom that you can just stand up and charge it, not worry about it. Um, on the sides you have your regular HANA styled tactical buttons and they're clicky, which is good. Uh, they're kind of uncomfortable to press all the time but I guess you get used to it. I'm having some trouble focusing on the screen which I really apologize for. I wish it would focus but if you have seen any DNA40 device uh, it is pretty much or exactly the same thing. When you start it up it says hello DNA40 and gives you all of the same features that a DNA40 would. So problems that the display has or the chip has is that uh, at least compared to the original DNA40, sometimes when you put on the the different coils, it doesn't register if it's a nickel coil or a canthal. Uh, not that big of a deal because I don't mind switching it once I put it on. Um, but sometimes it just doesn't go into temperature control, which is kind of annoying because you just assume it's on and then you go and burn your cotton because it's still on wattage mode. Um, to solve that, I've just been taking out the battery and popping it back in. So, I don't know, if you want to go to the trouble to do that all the time, uh, it's not that difficult, it's just something to point out. So, right now I have this at 0 0.11 ohms, it's just some 28 gauge nickel wire, which I picked up from Cold Turkey E-Juice, the new store in Toronto. So, thank you to you guys for hook me up with some of this nickel that I can use for this. It's 28 gauge and I have it at 400 degrees and 25 watts. Let's see if this burns. And I am pressing the button and I don't know if you can, you probably can't see it on the screen but it's saying temperature protection. So it's not burning it if your device forgets that it's on temperature control, which mine has done before, it will just go into volts or watts and just burn the shit out of your cotton. So that's something to note. Um, so yeah, the cotton is still clean. You have a little bit of discoloration, but 
nothing, nothing worrying. So that's good to see. So I'll just wick this up and we'll go back out and talk about it and vape on it. So that was an up close look at the DNA40 clone. The manufacturer's name is Smoke Air. Uh, but I got this from electthinker.com. It's a Chinese company. They sent me the Camry K1000 as well. Um, so I've had this for a while and I didn't want to review it until I knew what I was doing. And honestly, I think I know what I'm doing now, but it's still a bitch and a half to deal with this thing. Um, let's go over some cons first because they're the first thing that pops into my mind when using this. First of all, with the actual build of the device, um, there's no magnet on the back. So if you want to be replacing your batteries, uh, which sometimes you have to do because of another con, um, you have to unscrew it. So the other con that goes with that is that sometimes it doesn't switch over to temp control. Uh, so you have to take out your battery and put it back in. So if it's doing that a lot, you have to unscrew it and screw it back on all the time. Um, that's pretty annoying. The buttons, I've never wanted a HANA mod because of the buttons. They're just, they're not comfortable in my opinion. Some people love them, personally I do not. Uh, it's pretty solid, I don't have any, any complaints about that, but the cons. Um, no spring loaded 510, it's kind of a bitch. I haven't had any problems fitting my stuff on, but I still would have liked to see it spring-loaded. The chip itself is decent, but again, sometimes it doesn't register the temperature control. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only con I have with the, the chip itself. Let's go over some pros. The pros, when it does work, it works very well. You can vape this and vape this and vape this without having to drip again because it doesn't burn your cotton. You're not getting dry hits. You're not running out of flavor. Um, eventually you do run out of flavor and then you know just to drip again, which is fine. I haven't used this in a tank yet, so I don't know exactly how well that works, but from what I've seen, it works pretty well. It feels comfortable in the hand. I like the size of this, vapes well. Fits my 22 millimeter Addies well. There, there's, honestly, there are more cons than pros, but I actually think the pros outweigh the cons in this case. Uh, the price for temperature control, even the the cheapest authentic now for temperature control is the IPv4, and even that's around a hundred bucks. So, but that does go up to 100 watts, and it's probably built better, but. It's, it's your decision. Um, I like the color of it as well. The, the biggest thing is that it, it regulates the temperature well. Don't have many problems with that unless it, it glitches up and then burns it completely. Um, but as I think as long as you build your nickel coil properly and you know to make sure from the start that the resistance is around the right place. So, I mean, 10 wraps, 10 spaced wraps with this 28 gauge nickel comes out to 0.12 generally. As long as you're looking out for these things and making sure it looks like it's gonna vape right, it will. But if you're careless and you just throw it together, it's probably not gonna work very well. And this is not for an inexperienced builder. I. I have to say that, in my opinion. If you want a 40 watt device and you're looking for something like this that's affordable, feels nice in the hand, looks pretty good, it goes up to 40 watts, takes an 18650 battery, this, this is a really good option because if you do get more experience and you start to understand the, the nickel stuff and the temperature stuff and then you want to delve into it, the option is there, which is great to see. Uh, not everyone is going to want to. Personally, I prefer Canthal still because I get a warmer vape. Uh, I guess that depends on what wattage you're burning at, but at the same time, I, I personally don't get the same vape that I get out of Canthal. And the flavor... The, 
The flavor is good. I don't have complaints about the flavor really, but what I have noticed is that in the morning, if I vape this at night, in the morning, I wake up with like a metallic taste in my mouth and I feel like that's from the nickel. And that kind of scares me because I don't, that doesn't happen with canthol. Uh, and I've heard some scary stuff about nickel. Do your own research when it comes to nickel and make your own uh, decision based on what you think. Um, for now, I'm not sold on nickel yet. So it's up to you. I don't use this all the time, but when I do feel like having a challenge and building something and I'm tired of, say I go through a day of just not paying attention, just getting dry hit after dry hit, I just say, okay, let me just build one of these and not worry about that. So it's not an all day device for me, but it is pretty nice and I do enjoy vaping it. If you're worried about not getting the kind of clouds you're gonna get from Canthal and stuff like that, honestly, I don't notice too much of a difference. I'm still getting the clouds I want um, and pretty much the flavor I want. It's not exactly the same, but the actual flavor, maybe not the heat and the, the density maybe, but you are still getting the clouds. As far as a regular canthol device or whatever you happen to be using, a regular variable wattage device, this works great. Uh, it takes 118,650, so if you don't mind that for battery life, that's fine. Um, for me, it's okay. I wouldn't take this out if I knew I was going out for the whole day because like, I'm vaping this goblin at 0 0.45 at uh, 35 watts and it doesn't last me the entire day. So that's something to note, but it does vape well, like it should. And I don't have any problems with it in regular mode. Couple problems in temperature control, which I think is standard, uh, but as far as a regular 40 watt mod, this is pretty good. It's kind of expensive if you just want it for 40 watts at 60 bucks, when you can get, say, the Kanger K-Box, which is 40 watts for around 30 or 40 bucks. So. I guess it's it's what you're looking for in a device, but to have that option to do temperature control, I think it's it's a good price and it's worth it. And finally, if you are not, if you know that you get pissed off really easy with really finicky stuff and stuff that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, and you know that it's your fault, but you can't help but blame the device, this is not for you. You have to have some real patience dealing with this. Um, but if you do, and you don't mind putting in the work and the understanding and getting all the information about it, making it work to how you like it, I think you're gonna enjoy this device. I've been talking about it way too long. If you want one of these, go over to Elect Thinker, check it out. They have different colors as well. I just chose this blue because I thought it was nice and different. And the, the link for Elect Thinker will be in the description. As always, if you like the video, please give it a like. If you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about this or you wanna say anything about this, which you probably will if you are in love with DNA40 devices, you wanna bitch about me owning a clone or you wanna bitch about me not knowing the device properly or not showing it properly. I know I was putting off this because I know a lot of people are very touchy on the subject. Go ahead, throw it throw it out there, put it whatever, put whatever you want into the comments. I don't mind. Um, as long as it's not really rude, please, I, I just don't want that on my channel. Head over to Whacked Out Isig, the forum as well, and we can all chat about it if you want. You can start a thread, you can get a good discussion going over there as well. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again soon.